This all began on the train to Cardiff, appropriately enough, because uh, Mark and I were both working on in different episodes of Doctor Who. And we sat on the train together, we always get to sit on the train together so we could chat. And we, uh, we talked about our other great obsession, uh, which was Sherlock Holmes. And then suddenly it kind of it formed very quickly the idea in a, in a very exciting train journey of, of in, in a very Sherlock Holmes way. It was a proper Sherlock Holmes journey. The idea of um, blowing away the fog from it, and it was a kind of light bulb moment of like, you know, we should we should just do this present day. And that's when it properly began. Yeah, the pressure's there, the pressure's always there, who cares about pressure? It's the fun, it's the absolute joy that 221B Baker Street is our address just for this little while. And that's, that's too exciting to, to be worried about the pressure. Uh, as with James Bond, there are sort of half a dozen possible bonds, sometimes there's just one. And Benedict has sort of leapt into our mind. It's a wonderful combination of playing a hero who is a faulted human being. There's, there's, there's an awful lot of him that is dangerous and perverse and interesting and, and great stuff to get your teeth into as an actor. And at the same time, he is, uh, you know, a class A hero. Once you've got um, one side of the partnership, you've got to find the fit. The chemistry was instant. It, uh, it, it, you know, Martin's presence in the room changed the way Benedict played the part. Uh, it was, again, a very, very easy decision. You saw them standing together to go, oh, well, that's a television series right there. Sherlock's uh, quite cool man at times, and John's got a put upon man at times, but, but it, and you won't, you won't buy that, you won't enjoy that unless you absolutely feel in every scene and every heartbeat that there is that proper underlying warmth, that real, proper, solid friendship. And that friendship has actually happened between, between Benedict and Martin, and that's what that, the value of that you get on screen. Sherlock Holmes and John Watson are a fantastic pairing. They are, in many ways, uh, not quite chalk and cheese, but they complement each other, really. It's not, it's not a thing of difference being a problem, it's the thing that allies them. They are, they are the missing half of either, either party. Unbeknown to them, like any sort of great relationship or any great chemistry, they, they without knowing it, they realise they've met the right person. So sort of by the end of the first night they've spent together hanging out, they realise that they, they're going to be very, very good friends, you know, because they're a perfect foil for each other. John is, in a way, he's like Sherlock's kind of moral compass, because Sherlock's mind is so genuinely brilliant, he doesn't always stop to consider the, the whys and wherefores or the rights and wrongs of what is. Uh, and John is kind of like his moral barometer. And he's a more decent person in a way than Sherlock because he's more normal. You know, Sherlock is genuinely extraordinary. They are flatmates and they're supposed to be you know, two units. It, chemistry either happens or not, and you can't really manufacture it, you can't really do anything but hope it's going to happen. It's such a close relationship, Watson and Holmes. Conan Doyle's genius in creating those characters is the, the friendship between, the unlikely friendship between uh, Holmes and Watson. All those things are out there for us in the future. And if you know your Sherlock Holmes, you'll be sort of thinking, oh, how are they going to handle that?